As the cases of the COVID-19 virus increases in Nigeria, we wonder, is it possible that Nigeria has a higher number of cases than is being reported? And even if the real number of cases were reported, do we have the facilities and infrastructure to take care of them? We know that Abakiri, the president's chief of staff, has tested positive to the virus as well as other prominent figures. How sure are we that our leaders are truly following the precautions they have given uh, to us as followers? With me in the studio to have a conversation is Lulu Elegbe. Thank you very much for coming. Good evening. All right, let's get to it. Um, this conversation is because of a piece, a very thought-provoking piece by Yomi Kazim. And basically, perspective on issues. We need to inform the issues and ask questions. So we're going to look at, as at Sunday, Nigeria, we heard, has done 152 tests, right? And we have low numbers. This person is positioning that. It is not because of strategies, mm. but because of low testing. And he compares it to what South Africa has done. South Africa has done, as at the time the report was given, that was yesterday, uh, mm. 15,000 tests. They have, as of this morning, as of today, right now, it's over 700 cases in mm. South Africa. So my question is, should this be the case, low testing? The NCDC has also said that they are prioritizing um, those that are showing symptoms of the virus. Should it mm. be the case? Haven't we expended a lot of resources has been pumped into the NCDC? Well, it's a couple of things. So the strategy, um, the strategy they have right now is to, like you said, only test people that are showing symptoms. That strategy would be fine if asymptomatic people could not spread the virus. So the problem with that strategy is that even someone who's infected but isn't showing symptoms can still infect people. And that's where, that's what the, that's where the problem with that strategy is. Now, with regards to the, the low numbers, so as at today, I think there are 46 confirmed cases in Nigeria. I personally don't believe that number is real um, in terms of the actual figure. Um, figure, in terms of the actual number of people who actually have the disease in Nigeria, the virus in Nigeria. Um, so if you, you, all you need to do, all you need to look at is the US or the UK, for example. The reason their numbers are rising isn't because people are suddenly getting um, infected in the last few weeks. It's because they are testing more. And the more tests they're carrying out, the more they're finding, they're discovering new cases. So at this point in time, <clears throat> isn't it, isn't it um, time for us, for the government, to be mm. doing testing, not just uh, saying yeah, only when you show symptoms? Yeah, but the problem is, I think part of the, I think what they're not saying is I don't believe we have enough test kits, first of all. That's, testing is a problem, and that's probably what they're not saying. Because, for example, part of the, one of the reasons why the US came, sort of came late into the whole thing was because they didn't have enough testing kits. So they had to start, the government had to start contracting private companies to um, produce more kits. They had to order some from outside the country and those sorts of things. So by the time they did all that and started testing, as at, as at this evening, I think the US cases were now 60 something thousand. As at the weekend, it was just 20,000. So it's, it's, jumped from, it's jumped by about 40,000 in the last three days. And it's not, like I said, it's not because people are suddenly infecting other people, it's just because they are ramping up the testing. Okay. That's, that's why they're discovering all these new numbers. So I suspect that in Nigeria, if we somehow started ramping up testing, those numbers would go up, I suspect. How will we do that? We have five <coughs> testing centers as mm -hmm. of now. And before now, we were told they will be building more. China built a whole hospital um, in less than two weeks. Yeah. Um, and we are still talking about having five testing centers for mm -hmm. a population of over 200 million people. Uh, the question will be, considering the urgency, how soon do mm -hmm. you envisage, with all the comments and all the positive talk that's coming from the government, we'll be able to have more testing centers in light of the emergency of the situation? Well, I, uh, the, 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 the short answer is I don't know. Um, and that's because I think so far, the Lagos state government deserves a lot of credit for how they've handled things. Lagos is just but, one state. Yeah, that, so that, that was my next point. So the problem is 
Lagos is one state. Yes, it's the most popular state in Nigeria and the ports of entry and all that, but it's still one state. My worry really is that if things get hairier than they are right now, would Lagos State still be able to cope? I don't think so. And not because they're doing anything wrong, but because generally as a country, we just don't have the infrastructure to cope. And that's one of the reasons that I've been sort of pushing for this idea of, you know, let's lock things down for at least two weeks. Because let's be honest, we don't have, we don't have the capacity to deal with an outbreak in this country. We don't. So if we don't have the, the capacity to do that, the only thing we can do is prevent it from becoming an outbreak in the first place. How do we do that by, pre by, pre by preventing the spread? We, we keep talking about social distancing, but I don't understand how we can- practicing it right now. Well, that's me and you, but, <laughs> but you, you and I are the minority. The, I think you can't talk about social distancing when you have um, public transport buses that are filled to capacity every day. I saw that on my way robbing. to work exactly. today. So how, so how do you know one person on any of those buses isn't affected? It, and these are the things that, these are the reasons why I'm saying, you know, let's just lock things down for this period of time so that we know exactly what we're dealing it with. It seems the more of, um, um, this is a deviation though, but mm. you mentioned it and it came to my mind. I saw a report this morning on Al Jazeera mm. actually, um, about people actually saying that the disease does not exist as far as they are concerned. This is in the federal capital territory, that a disease does not exist. And even mm. if it exists, it's for the elite, it's not for the poor masses. So with that level of ignorance still existing, mm. what more can the government do at this point to get to those people? Because those are the people you're expressing fear about. Yeah, but it's not, so it's not just them. So the <laughs> The ignorance is on, many, is on many sides. So there's the ignorance of those sorts of people. There's the ignorance of, I saw a video, someone sent me a video I think earlier today with um, a pastor saying that coronavirus will not get you because oh, they have, I saw that as well. they Some have of our corrosive, religious leaders. corrosive anointing or something like that. So there are people that swallow up those sorts of things. There are people that don't even believe the disease exists in the first place. So. We, I think earlier this week, I was talking to one of your colleagues about the National Orientation Agency, for example. They should be at the forefront of pushing this message out there. That look, this thing is real. This thing is not a joke. This thing, I have a friend, um, I have a friend from secondary school. She lives in Canada who's been infected. So she's, she's, going, through, she's going through treatment at the moment. She can't see her family. She can't see her Isolation. children. They've tested, thankfully her daughter and her husband have tested um, negative. negative. But, so you can imagine someone telling me that this, uh, when I know, know per personally you. someone who's been infected by this thing. The president's chief of staff, for example, has okay. been infected. So this, um, we heard this afternoon that Prince Charles has been infected. So when people start to say, no, this thing doesn't exist, it's a disease for the elite. No, I mean, we have over 20,000 people dead globally. And this is both rich, poor, man, woman, old, young, no difference. The death toll in Italy has already surpassed China. The death toll in Spain has already surpassed China. So for people to still be, so that, I don't understand the, the ignorance about this thing. There might and, not be, that, that's the thing I was trying to emphasize. Mm. They might not be aware of these figures. You seek out these figures mm. because you want to know. Mm. These people in the first instance do not believe. I mean, uh, there is the responsibility of government to save people from themselves. Yeah. And that's why we have emergency laws that can be enacted when mm. we have situations like this. So yeah. what kind of emergency move, in your opinion, can the government take to reach these people? Because that is where some of the spread is going undetected. Yes. For me, it's, it's, so it's not just, I don't think it's just one thing that needs to be done, it's a number of things. There's the issue of locking down things to the point of suspending public transport, because I think public transport right now is a major hazard, is a major, if, if we're not careful, it's going to be a, a major point of spreading this, this virus, because the, you, it's, it, I mean, you've, we've, we've all seen the buses, we've all seen the buses, you can't, um, you can't, it's impossible to keep social distance there. That's, that's on the one hand. On the other hand, because so many people don't know about, don't believe that this thing even exists in the first place, they think it's a hoax and those sorts of things. What I would have expected to see is 
whether it's billboards, whether it's adverts, whether it's campaigns to show that, to, to drive this message home, look, this thing is real and it's here in this country. We need to deal with this thing. So everybody is aware that we have a problem, or we have a potential problem if we don't deal with this thing. Okay, let's look at the issue of uh, quarantine. Um, mm. we, they say self-isolation. It's, um, it's not made mandatory, but mm. we have uh, countries that have made it mandatory in Africa, Kenya, yeah. Ghana, Uganda. Okay. They are making those that are coming in, even, at, even those that are there, once you have, um, you know, and you are mandatorily um, isolated. Some have even invented the fact that you do it at your own expense. You isolate yourself at your own expense. Mm. Why are we still doing self-isolate while the NCDC, you know, That's monitors your progress? That's a good question. And I think this idea of the NCDC monitoring progress, um, I know someone that came back from the UK just over a week ago. Um, she's self-isolating, but as far as she's, no, no one's contacted her, no one's asked her any questions or anything like that. So I don't know if the plan is, to, is for her to contact them, if she feels any symptoms, or I, I don't know. But again, I've had people who've, who've called those NCDC numbers and Either they're not being picked up. So th there are all sorts of issues. We In Ghana and these countries you mentioned, for example, when people come from high-risk countries, that's countries that have more than 1,000 cases, they are, like you said, they're compulsorily quarantined for 14 days. But here we're asking people to self-isolate. So we're basically passing the responsibility of that to people to do that. That would be fine if everybody was responsible. But everybody is not, not just Nigeria. But generally speaking, everybody isn't responsible. So I don't understand why you know that someone is coming from the US or the UK or China or Italy or one of these places. There, I mean, first of all, there's the issue of why we didn't restrict flights from those countries in the first place, which should have been a no-brainer. These people, I mean, the, the, the virus has taken hold of these countries. It only makes sense that people coming from those countries should face certain restrictions. I, why they didn't do that until much later, I don't know, because it seems like they're waiting for things to get bad before they do certain things. But my point is they should take those steps so that things don't get bad. Because my worry more than anything else is that if things get bad, we cannot cope with it. That's what worries me. Do, do you see that else. changing? Um, let's say now that we have very high profile cases testing yep. positive for the virus, yep. do you think that will expedite action and maybe make us move more towards um, putting things in place that will help with this? I hope so. Um, I don't know if it will, but I hope so. Um, the Lagos state government seems to be taking the lead in doing this. Um, they've, I think from tomorrow, markets and other places are going to be closed from tomorrow. But then you still have these cases of people, um, I think last Sunday, so that even though mass gatherings of more than 20 people had been banned, people were still going to church, churches were still holding um, services. I hope we don't see that this Sunday again, because all these things are we, we, we sometimes behave like we're immune from these things. The, the, um, one of the positive cases, for example, was at the recent AV, AVMCA awards. awards. And there was, there was a post yesterday, I, th I think it was from the NCDC or the Lagos State Government, saying anyone who went for that award show should self-isolate, for example. Now, there is no way, it's, it's pretty much impossible to start contact tracing everybody, every single person that went, for that, that, went for that award. So this is why I said this number 46 that we have, I don't believe it's real. And the only way we know that, well, the only way we can know for sure is if we ramp up testing. I don't believe we're going to do that because I just don't think we have enough. Um, we had, I know we had a consignment of um, medical from equipment Jack from Jack Ma that arrived, I think, yesterday. That should help, hopefully. But it doesn't look good. It doesn't okay. look good. What's your stance on a uh, shutdown, calls for shutdown? We know, for instance, that Malawi did not have any case yeah. before they shut down their borders and shut down everything. India, of over how many, their population yeah. is more than ours, there's oh, a yeah. complete shutdown. Yeah, Why do you think there is hesitation But still? that's my point, though. So those countries, what those countries are doing is exactly the point I'm making. You don't wait until things get bad before you shut these things down. You don't wait until... So th this is why I can understand what we're doing here. Yes, I understand. I get that there are problems 
Um, so like yesterday on one of my WhatsApp groups, we're discussing this issue of if things do get shut down, what happens to, say, artisans who earn um, on, a daily, on a daily basis on maybe construction sites or those, what happens there? Those are the kinds of discussions I would expect them to be having at that level, saying, okay, if we shut this down, what do we do with these people? And then you have a conversation about how that is going to work, how you're going to make that work. But we all know that at the end of the day, shutting things down is the most sensible thing to do because that's the only way that's the only way you can ensure that you know what everybody's staying put nobody's going out unless um, people we, um, people that do essential roles or essential jobs in the uk for example two days ago the uk prime minister essentially shut down the country because he said that if the if the um, if the infection rate continues the way it is, so overwhelm the, the NHS. The NHS cannot cope. The NHS runs one of the largest public health care systems in the world. They are the fifth largest employer in the world. And if they're saying they cannot cope if this thing spread, continues to spread, then I worry for Nigeria because obviously our healthcare system is nowhere near what the NHS is. So if they're saying that they cannot cope with a major outbreak, then I really, really worry about what we're doing here. Okay, let's, let's see if we can um, proffer some ideas. Mm -hmm. What would be moves that you will see them making now, statements that we will see from here from the government, rather, yeah. that will reassure you that they're really, truly expending all efforts to see how they can contain this virus? So one of the things, um, I saw something yesterday, for example, about uh, GTB, um, the, setting up, um, this, yes, setting isolation up um, centers. isolation centers. I've heard of some companies that are doing things like that. So what I ex what I would expect to see is that for doctors or people with medical training to start being trained in pandemic response, so that you can send them to these places if um, an outbreak actually happens. You don't have to wait until it happens to do that. You should start that from now so that once or if it does happen, we're prepared to deal with it. It won't solve the problem, but it will reduce the impact of the problem. So if they, that, that's, I think that's one of the major things that they should, they should be looking at doing at the moment. There was, um, there was a post, uh, I went to Federal Government College, Joss. So one of the um, old students association, I think it's the president, he sent, an, uh, he sent a post today asking for um, our comments on something being deliberated at the House of Reps at the moment, which is using Unity schools for um, as, as isolation centers on whether or not we think that's a good idea. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about. I think that's a good discussion to even have. The final decision might be not to use it, but at least there's a, there's a conversation. It shows that there's, there's some thought going into these sorts of things. I'd have preferred that these conversations happened a bit earlier, but it's better that they're happening now than, than, not, than well. not at all. So if they decide to do this thing, so whether they're using churches, whether they're using mosques, whether they're using stadiums, open spaces, those sorts of things, it's still medical personnel that had or trained medical personnel that have to um, work in those places. So what I hope is that while these conversations are going on, those trainings with, me with medical staff and these sorts of people is actually, they, I hope that those conversations or those trainings are going on at the same time because we need, we need all the help we can get at the end Indeed. of the day. Thank you very much for your thoughts thank on the you. program. It's appreciated. And of course, thank you for staying with us thus far. We'll take a plot report now. And when we return, I'll give my take. Stay with us. The Christian Association of Nigeria in Adamawa State has banned Sunday services and masses among its members as part of its effort to contain the coronavirus pandemic. The chairman of Khan in the state, Bishop Stephen Mamza, said other social activities, which attract more than 50 persons, remains banned. Encourage smaller units or congregational assemblies of 50 people only. We recommend the suspension of Sunday services and masses until further notice. The faithful are encouraged to continue with private devotions in their respective homes. We urge all Christians and all people of goodwill to duly observe the following adjustments we have made regarding our worship and activities. We ask proprietors of all Christian schools to comply with the government directives by closing all Christian schools on or before Friday, 27th March, 
2020. As we collectively continue to struggle to find ways to forge ahead in our quest to defeat the coronavirus pandemic, may I reiterate that it is imperative that we endeavor to seek information from the right sources. Take safety measures within your power and do not panic. Do not panic. This too shall pass. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can catch up on previous episodes on our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Until I see you again, please be well.